of Japan know about it. Uh, it's been on Japanese television on and off in the last couple of years. Uh, but quite honestly, I'm surprised there's not massive amounts of people going to visit this. Me too. I mean, I'm just, it kind of makes me wonder why the powers that be would really like to hide this information from us. But, but you know, it's interesting is that on the graves is a plaque from the Israeli ambassador. And in fact, every, what they told me was every Israeli ambassador uh, has gone there and, and, and made a ceremony. And, and they actually in 2004 put a plaque on this grave, which dedicates it and says that this area is a sister city to Jerusalem. Oh, wow. So for the Israelis to do that is significant. It sure is. We're just kept in the dark. Look, when you are a small group of people mm-hmm. and you want to control billions of people, mm-hmm. you know, armies are not enough because you could be overwhelmed by the population. So really, the most logical thing you can do is to mind control and program the people to, to believe and act a certain way, not deviate from that, and then you stay in power. And that's why they do it. I know that you and Janet like to do work for people to help them with their deprogramming process. Will you please list the tasks needed to take place? It needs to, there are other things that need to be done first. Uh, release work needs to be done, balancing your left and right hemisphere. Uh, you need to grow up the child within. Uh, then you need to start reintegration process, and then you need to do all the different uh, deprogramming techniques, which depends on the programming you have. Um, anyone who's interested in that would, uh, I would advise them to watch my, uh, my YouTube videos on it, mm-hmm. or they can read my book, uh, 13 Cube or True Reality of Sexuality or Hyperspace Helper, which have deprogramming techniques in there. But it's not something you just do. You have to do other work first, which is, you know, it's a long process. Am I right in stating that you do offer consultations? Oh, yeah, of course. That's oh, what great. I do today. Yeah. Fantastic. Because I think a lot of us would be very interested in that. Yeah, but I do advise people to read first, uh, you know, and watch the videos. Uh, get Do your homework yes. before. And, you know, it's just like if you're going to, you know, learn how to drive, you don't just get in the car and start the engine. You have to, you know, read the manual and take a class and then you then you can learn. And it's unfortunately the same uh, with the mind. You can't just... It, to me, the mind is like an archaeological dig. You can't just stick the shovel and you're going to damage something. It has to be a very slow process, layer by layer by layer. I mean, it's your, it's your mind. And so it has to be taken care of very, uh, very uh, carefully. Absolutely. Well, I have some questions from our listeners, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Well, I only chose a couple. The first one comes from Leslie Wagoner of New Zealand. Ah, I, I was just in New Zealand in November. Well, she says, based on Stuart's experiences, what does he see for our near future? What has all the mind control, Mars travel, and time travel led to? And what does he think is the end game? Does it involve the New World Order? Well, yes, that's the whole uh, point of it, is to create a New World Order, which in my opinion is already here. Um, They want to impose a New World religion where everyone has to believe the same thing. Uh, they want to impose a global government so everyone reports to the same leaders everywhere. Uh, all of history will is actually being unified in all countries so people learn the same history regardless of what the truth is. And in order to accomplish that, and I've, I've written about this many times on my site and in my books, they're go- they've already created staged events. Uh, to create fear and panic and to make people believe certain things like 9-11 was a staged event. Uh, the, the Malaysian Airlines is a staged event. All these things are perpetrated in order to create fear because they know when there's fear in the population, it opens up the mind for programming. They will, uh, and that already is in progress, my opinion, is a staged alien invasion where they will announce that our world is being attacked by alien beings and we all have to unite under one government, one army, one belief system in order to repel uh, these invaders. And then uh, they will have a rescue uh, group or rescue or savior race come and chase away the invaders. And of course, these uh, savior race will be reptilian. 
and they will say hey, that we are actually their descendants and that they are our ancestors and you know we all one one big happy family and we should all do what they say um and wh- how do we see this happening now well first of all hitler uh in his uh plan uh according to um Werner von Braun, who was uh, taken to the United States after the war and created NASA, um, he said Hitler was going to create a staged alien invasion. And the first thing they were going to do was create, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, fear of other uh, cultures that, that we had in the past. Then there was going to be terrorists that were going, were going to be the, the global fear. Then they were going to morph that into asteroids and comets and then finally an alien invasion. And that's exactly the order that we have followed uh, since World War II. Uh, so now we're, we're, we're in the uh, comet and asteroid and meteor fear part. We see that happening almost every other week. Yes. And, you know, which is most of it is not even real. And then after that comes the aliens, you know. Um, I had mentioned a couple of years ago when they first started to talk about Kuiper Belt and objects appearing in the Kuiper Belt. And then they kind of uh, died that news down. Uh, I said, all these asteroids and meteors and all these things flying into the Earth, they're going to say that it's coming from the, you know, an aliens using it as weapons against us. And lo and behold, about maybe a year ago, they said, guess what? There's this huge object in the Kuiper Belt and maybe in the Oort Belt beyond the Kuiper Belt. Uh, that's hurling these objects towards us. Now, we don't know if it's a natural thing or what's going on, but that's what's going on. The, these, this object is causing these uh, meteors and, and asteroids to be hurled at us. So, you know, it came true. That's exactly what they said. Mm-hmm. Um, and when the Pioneer spacecraft was uh, in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, it got stuck. And NASA said, well, there's a strange energy from the Kuiper belt that's keeping it blocked and pushing it back. So little by little, they're revealing some information. But as I caution people, they're not going to reveal the truth about the alien presence and et cetera. It's going to be what they want people to know, not what the truth is. I'm curious as to um, if you've ever worked with aliens Yes, in Montauk I did. Oh, you did. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. So which ones did you see? Well, in fact, that's in my Blue Blood, Blood, uh, Blue Blood, True Blood, Blood, True, and also uh, the Montauk Alien Connection book, which is the story of what I did there, is in there. Um, many of what I dealt with were, uh, let's see, there were reptilians, there were Antarians, there were uh, Pleiadians, there were all kinds of beings there, Tau Ceti, uh, a lot of things uh, out there. You know, um, the U.S. government had information um, about a group out there that's connected to the so-called Little Greys. Um, and this these Greys called themselves the Network. Um, and they claimed that their network alone had 17,000 different civilizations as part of it. So, I mean, you, we don't even have that many countries on Earth. We don't even have that many cultures on Earth. The concept of 17,000, and that's just one little group, you know, it's mind-boggling. It really is. Mm-hmm. So, if so, they really wanted to have an invasion, they surely would be successful, wouldn't they? Well, you know, my opinion is we already invaded because uh, we're controlled already by that. Um, the, the, the Illuminati, uh, acquiesce to much, much of this anyway. Um, and that's why we have all these staged events because they want people to be in fear. Um, if people knew the truth, they would not be in fear. And if they told the truth, the real truth, it would undermine religion, the economy, uh, politics, everything, every way of life that we have now would be undermined. Because we would know it's all fake. Very confusing. Well, that's what they say. And that's why they they say, and that's what we learned at Montauk, is that the reason they they do all of this and put mind control and programming in these staged events is because humans are really, uh, quote, too stupid to take care of themselves. And if left to their own devices, it would be a mess on the earth. So that's why they feel they're doing a great service to humanity by controlling them. Wow. 
And would you believe in heaven? You know, it's a state of mind. There's no place that's called heaven. It's just, you know, different uh, variations of, of energy. So basically when we die, we just, we go to another source of energy. We are energy. We just go, you know, the body is like a vehicle that we use. And then we leave the vehicle and we uh, go to another energetic location where we can continue on with what we need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, life is eternal. When you die, when your physical body dies, the mind is still existing. You know, soul personality still exists. You just go on to do other things. Right. Yes. Okay. So his second question is, um, he says, the world is in great transformation. The new world order is becoming a real threat. Will it be successful? If not, what will stop it? Well, it's already successful, and it's already a threat, not becoming one. Uh, what's going to stop it? Uh, each one of us, not with war, not, not with fighting, but if we remember that human beings as a species have a victimization mind pattern. That's an underlying mind pattern. So when you have a victimization mind pattern, you attract tyrants and uh, oppressors, and it's they're just playing a role that we're giving them. So that's why I do my work. If you re- remove the mind patterns that are negative, low self-worth, self-punishment, victimization, abandonment, all those neg- negative mind patterns, mm-hmm and you replace them with positive mind patterns, then the Illuminati and New World Order can't exist because we will not be projecting that out from our minds. And I use the analogy that thoughts are like film, the brain is the projector, and physical reality is the screen. So if we want to change the movie that's playing around us, we need to change the film, which is the way we think. And that's the basis of the work that I do. Interesting. I like that. Y- you and Janet both do a lot of that type of work, yes? That's that's exactly what we do. That's fantastic. I just love it. So I'm um, hoping that the word will get out and more people will learn how to do this, including myself. I would like to know how how does one know when when they've been part of a program? Well, I have in my um, hyperspace helper book an exercise called the Green Spiral Staircase, which is a form of mental time travel where you can focus on a particular incident and go back in time and look at it uh, to see what the actual truth is. So you might want to read that okay. and try that. But you know, the, the truth is 100% of the world is programmed. I mean, there's no one on Earth who is not. Oh. It's simply a question of intensity or degree. You know, the, the the world is completely surrounded by satellites, cell towers, you know, microwave. They're all transmitting 24-7 mind control ways. You could be sitting and having lunch or, you know, f- you know filing your nails and you're being programmed. Uh, that's how extensive the technology is. It's, you know, years ago, they would have to take a person and do programming session and all of that. They don't have to do that anymore. Now it's just satellite transmission. You don't, you can be anywhere and, and have it done. It's that easy, huh? It's extremely easy. If you watch TV, you're being programmed. If you go into the movies, you're being programmed. You know, it's just as simple as that. And so I teach techniques to block that. For example, uh, keeping yourself in a violet color blocks those transmissions. Uh, so it will help people uh, to do that. Uh, using uh, what I call a brown merger symbol at the pineal gland will also reintegrate the fractured compartments of the, of the personality. So there are things we can do. We're not just helpless victims. We can actually start to take control of our own minds and bodies um, and become whole again. And I think that's why human species is experiencing this, because they need to learn to be who and what they really are and not let others uh, tell them what they are. Absolutely. And I think we're just now starting to learn this. I mean, I I just woke up in 2010, and uh, there's just so many people out there who just don't even understand that. But uh, hopefully more and more people will wake up. You know, most people out there, 7.5 billion people on this planet, how many people do you think even understand any of the things we're talking about here? A, A minute percentage 
exactly. uh, and, you know, and that's why the Illuminati think the conspiracy movement and all this is it's funny to them because like who's listening and they and they make it into a joke. You know, oh, if you believe in aliens, there's something wrong with you. Or, you know, if you, if you saw a you know, ghost and, you know, you're a lunatic. Mm-hmm. So that, that's how they want make people to think. Yep. It's so true. Mm-hmm. It's easy to label people. Yes. And they want to label people. You know, that, what did the George Bush say uh, in 2003? Either you're with me or you're against me. There's no thing in between. You know, and so that's what it is. It's like, well, well, if you don't believe that there are terrorists and that people are out to get us, what's wrong with you? Are you part of the, those terrorist groups? You know, that's, that's what they want people to believe. It's really ugly. We've turned into, uh, well, I don't want to say that. <laughs> well, you can say it because it's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, wow. I think we are digressing. Well, we're, we're regressing. Uh, you know, we're degenerating into uh, an animalistic society, which is herded by uh, the shepherds. And uh, and we have no way to get out of the corral. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it's like, and not an analogy. Right. Well, I'm really interested in, in getting the word out and trying to help people to, um, the word that you use is merge, correct? Merging, uh, reintegrating, uh, the fragmented pieces of the mind. When a person is programmed, the mind fractures into compartments and it, it creates a cube situation of 13 by 13 by 13, which is the most pieces the mind can fracture into. And that's 2,197 compartments or alters that can be programmed. So, in an extreme circumstance, that's the, the most. Oh, dear. But, but that's a lot of pieces, you know? And so that needs to be reintegrated, merged back in to the to- total personality uh, so that the person can function in, in the way they're supposed to. That's all right. Well, thank you so much for doing that and offering it to us. Um, how can our listeners find out about the work that you and Janet do? Do you have a website? Yeah, uh, expansions.com, uh, you know, triple w dot e x p a n s i o n s dot com. And everything's on there. You know, you'll see podcasts that we do every week with the news and explaining what's going on. We have books. The, uh, we don't have DVDs anymore, but we have videos on YouTube. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of holistic products to heal, help people heal themselves. Uh, connections to supplements, um, not not that we sell them, but we connect to groups that do. So there's a lot on there, and um, people should go on there and read it every day. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. I hope that uh, that I can have you back sometime in the future. Yeah, I'd love to. Was, I'd, uh, I'd love to have Janet on. Well, you can ask her. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Definitely.